Home sweet home, eh? I tell you, I don't care if I never rode you another gig after that lot. You said that last time. Yeah, well, that was motorhead, weren't it? Hey, hey, what is it this time? Old age, too much of that German lager. Could <laughs> be. There we go, Chief. Right on schedule. You know what? I should be running British Rail. Hey, let's stop for some breakfast before we get this lot back, yeah? What are you doing with that gear? I mean, what would happen if we got pulled back there, eh, you, you lunatic? No problem. Had it in my mouth, didn't I? It's my last little bit, this save for the homeward stretch. Yeah? <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, thanks a bunch, Eddie. It's all right, my son. Toast yep. and a tea, please, love. Sure, yeah. Uh, me, I want a uh, double egg, bacon, beans, tomatoes, and a fried slice. Oh, and uh, two rounds of toast and a cup of tea, please. <laughs> so, I'm hungry. Oh, they're making it simple for us. You stay with the car and follow me when I drive out. And uh, nice and easy, right? Kit for the rest of the week when we dump that lot off. If I can get my eyelids together. Would you been a cigarette in the No, I left him in the van. I don't carry him around for you. Yeah, but if they bring my breakfast, don't go nicking my egg, okay? Don't bet on it. I guess that does wonders for your chest, huh? 
Sure looks like it. Hey, you hit it. What, do you get a Cupid doll or something? No, I get a gorilla from America. What are you doing here, Dempsey? This is strictly for club members. And don't tell me you've joined, because they wouldn't have you. See, now, there you go again with that class barrier stuff. What is that, anyway? Something you got with cereal box hops? It's a compound bird, since you ask. Works like a pulley system, so that the draw weight is minimalized. Frowned on in this sort of circle, but uh, certainly very powerful. I don't see too many of these Robin Hoods frowning. How do you get away with the bad form, being a cop? Will you please tell me what you're doing here? We got business, honey. The crap has hit the fan at Agincourt, and Spike and the Fifth have need of thee in thy funny bow and arrow. And forsooth has sent me to fetch thee and bring thee, like spot like now. Will you stop torturing the language and tell me what you're trying to say? Okay. A hijack truck, murder with a 38, and the chief's gone crazy because you ain't around on your day off, which is no longer your day off, so are you coming? Of course, since you put it so well. Don't give me the runaround about preference, Frank. You know what I want. Aliases, known associates, previous MO, the lot. And I don't want them next Wednesday. I want it now. All right, you do that. Ah, oh, make peace. Welcome back to the 20th century. No bows and arrows in this one, I'm afraid. Just big, nasty bullets. Dempsey's briefed you, I take it? Yes, he has. I understand we have a witness to the murder. Yes. One lovejoy, would you believe? Sales rep and athletic supports. An uplifting sort of a job, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, I wonder we have to talk to him, Chief. You don't. He's given us all we want, a positive ID on the gunman, and he's prepared to swear to it. Summarize it for us, Sergeant. We wouldn't want our colonial brethren to feel left out. Colonial? We whipped your butts 200 years ago, sir. Hmm. Let me see the mugshot, Harry. Please. Name's Paul Marshall, aged 34, born and lives in London. Started as a car thief, graduated to robbery. Did three years in Brixton, 73 to 76. No convictions since, but twice arrested on suspicion of trafficking in prohibited drugs. Well, well. Released on both occasions through lack of evidence. So we learned how to get slippery while he was in the joint. And where to buy a gun, I should think. Well, he certainly graduated from being a car thief. It certainly has. What it doesn't tell you in there is that Marshall's been making some very funny friends for a minor crook. If the whisper's right, he's moved into the drug trade coming from the Middle East. He set up a run through Europe to Amsterdam and to London, and probably New York. Oh, yeah? I'd like to meet him. I thought you might. Well, now's your chance. Whatever it is, it's a can of worms. He wouldn't go back to nicking transits for a laugh. And now he's shooting. The governor wants him, and I want him. Badly. Thank you very much for waiting, friend. There's nothing like a bit of backup when you need it. You are stupid. There is no room for stupidity in what we do here. What was I supposed to do with the guy? Bring him along for the ride? You were supposed to deliver this with a minimum of attention. According to the radio, you now have half the police in London looking for you. Not good, Mr. Marshall, for any of us. Listen, you've got the stuff, haven't you? If the law's out to get me, that's my problem. You and your little mob are still clean, aren't you? Now, do you want the gear or not? 
So, show us, please. It's that one there. Now Laura Nardi can do the donkey work. Take his gun. What's going on? I'll load the van. Just a minute. Hang about, you two-faced bastard. You and me had a deal. That was before the shooting. Now we have a liability. You. So we keep you until you can no longer jeopardize us. Then we shall see. Super dicks for you. Real heavy mob. Hey, nice to know us. What's he talking about? <laughs> Who are you? Just a couple of cops, Piglet. Don't get sweaty. Mind if we call you Piglet? Everybody seems to be doing it. So yourself. <laughs> Anything's better than Cyril. <laughs> what you want? We'd like to hear your version of what happened today. And why you think it happened. Well, I don't know, do I? Some lunatic nicked the van and shot me, mate. I've already gone over it ten times with the other lot. We'll go over it one more time. What do you got to lose? Got you a little pad, Harry? Naturally, Lieutenant. Who are you? Open the door. It was all right, Eddie was. And we did a lot of miles together. What a way to go, eh? I mean, what a way to go! How easy would it have been to plant you on the way back? Switch a case or something? Not impossible. I mean, we're just a road crew, not security core. Hey, do you reckon that's what it was? They set us up? You wouldn't be the first by any means. It's a lot safer than taking it through customs yourself if you're a dealer. And no comeback if anybody gets busted. Listen, I'm sorry about your friend. I know how it feels. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Uh, hey, listen, uh, how much longer have I got to stay cooped up in here? I mean, I only saw the back end of it. You shouldn't be here much longer once you've signed the statement. If you like, I'll get them to bring you a cup of tea. Yeah, that'd be nice. Hey, yeah, uh, you couldn't get them to put a bacon sandwich beside it, could you? I've just realised I'm starving. He was giving us the truth, wasn't he? As far as I could see. Didn't seem like one of nature's gangsters to me. Speaking of which, we're no closer to Marshall from anything he told us. But there must be a tie-in somewhere. Marshall didn't just pick them out of a hat. It must be the studio. Somebody who works there or something. There's so many people who go in and out of that. I'm gonna drop you off. Then I'm gonna go by my place. I need to pick up a few things. Dempsey, spiking's waiting with the idea at Marshall's address. We liaise, remember? Yeah, or we'll work around them if we don't. So you liaise and I'll work around them. We'll save <sighs> a lot of time. Look, we got a killer out there, remember? Look. We got drugs here. We got rock and roll here. There's only one thing missing with us. Oh, really? What might that be? Sex. Oh, this is ridiculous, Massad. You know that. What do you think I'm gonna do, turn you in or something? It'd be like cutting my own throat. Perhaps not. But for the present, I prefer to keep you where you can do us no harm, consciously or otherwise. Simply a precaution. Yeah. Then what happens? I suppose you pay me off and we all live happily ever after. I'm dead. And you know that, you two-faced bastard.
Christy, that was absolutely divine, darling. Sounded like your lunch was coming up. What? Listen, take a ten-minute break and we'll see if there's anything there we can salvage. Yeah, all right. I'll see if I can learn the words. Oh, this one's got words, does it? Who are you? Don't tell me you're Terence Donovan, because he wears a whistle. For taking pictures, what's he need a whistle for? It's a suit. Whistle and flute suit. Are you a Yank? Born and bred. Not well bred, just bred. Whereabouts? New York. Where else is there? Don't know, never been. You don't look American. It's just your accent. I don't, huh? My old man was Irish, my mother was Italian. That ought to make me American. What are you doing here? Freelancing, just trying to make a buck. Yeah? You print any of that, and I'll sue you. Or my manager will. Personally, I couldn't give a toss. What's your name? Jim Dempsey. What's yours? Christy. Short for Christine. Looks better on the posters, too. Looks good enough to me. Don't give me any of that rubbish. Have any toot on you? Jim Dempsey, have you? I could do some sparkling here. Well, no, uh... But I heard there was some around. I just ain't run into it yet. Makes two of us. Mid won't show up for a fortnight. With all this law that's been flapping around. You hear about that? Yeah, somebody got shot, right? Yeah. Bella called Eddie. One of the roadies here. Madness, isn't it? You said it. They say Eddie was a friend of Major's, huh? How should I know? You'd have to ask Midge, wouldn't you? I'm just trying to score. You know I could run into him? Who knows? I'm not his agent. OK, Christine, let's have another crack at it. Yeah, all right. You're nearly all right. Perhaps it's just being a yank. Are we wasting our time here or what? Come on, spit it out. Looks like it, sir. Marshall hasn't been seen around here for the last month or so. Hasn't paid the rent either. You lot found anything? No, sir. No, come in. No. He's moved on. Well, this is just a meeting place. Can't have all the luck, can we? What about surveillance? He could still use it as a bolt hole. Let's leave that to the uniforms. They like all that hanging about. What you've got to do is to round up our vanishing American and get your noses out onto the street as a team. speaks English anymore. Where have you been? All over the place, love. Listen, what are you doing this evening? Are you in, are you? I thought I might drop round, you know, bring a bottle of wine or something. Is that all right? Oh, that'd be lovely. I was only going to go home, have a bath and stir at the box. Usual stuff. I finished around seven, thank God. All right, I'll see you later. Don't take any wooden money now, will you? Eh? No. Oh, Paul, I've missed you. Yeah, me too. You're a good girl, darling. See you later, then. Yeah, bye.
It's called procedure. You must have heard of it, even in the wilds of New York. What kind of police force do you think we'd have if everyone just took off and played Humphrey Bogart whenever they felt like it? What's eating you? Spiking his tear when your ears off about me, is that it? Not for the first time. I didn't ask for you, Dempsey, and I'm certainly not going to jeopardize my career for you. Do you understand me? Just stay in line, will you? Okay, Commissioner. I'm sorry. You want to hear about my lead now? What lead? Well, it seems there's this guy who hangs around the studios, a dealer, local candy man. If there's a tie-in with Marshall, chances are it's him. Where do we find him? Well, that part I didn't get. Just a name. So you've got some leg work to do. How are your legs? Our friend Piglet's a self-confessed pothead, isn't he? Who also works for the studio. Let's ask him. Hey, why didn't I think of that? And I'm supposed to be the brains of this outfit. No, I'm the brains, actually. You're the muff. There you go. Thanks, love. Hi. Remember us? Yeah, of course I did. What you want? Come on, you lose your appetite. I thought you were starving back in the camp. Yeah, so did I. Can't seem to get my mind off Eddie, I suppose. I mean, you don't see it every day, do you? Do you want to help us find the man who killed him, then? We know who he is, but we don't know where he is. We need an address from you. Me? Who's? A fellow named Midge. The guy you buy your dope from. Where is he? Midge? Who said I know Midge? Who told you that? Let's say it was an educated guess. Who's more important to you, Piglet? Your friend Eddie or your dope dealer? Well, doesn't it work like that with you? After all, he's dead, isn't he? Why put yourself out? Yeah, all right. I don't owe Midge any favors. But I don't see how busting him's gonna get you that far. I mean, he strictly announces, man. He gets it from a guy who gets it from another guy who probably carries a gun to protect his investment. We're not talking peace and love here. Now, where do we find them? He lives off the Portobello, near that Irish pub there. I don't remember the number. He's got a room in the basement. Now, that's it. That's all I know. That's good enough. We'll find him. I bet you will. Have a nice day. Don't give him my regards, will you? We should have kept these at hand, Massad. He would not have gone far. Perhaps not. And perhaps we would have attracted just a little attention to ourselves. Eh? You talk like a fool, Khalil. What if he got caught? He will tell them all he knows about us. Then what? It changes nothing. Even if he gets caught, what can he tell them? That he smuggled guns for a man called Massad? He knows nothing of our purpose here, sir. And since we have but one opportunity, our plans remain the same. We should have killed him sooner. Once we had the guns, we should have killed him. Yes, we should have killed him. But we didn't. Perhaps the police will do it for us. He has a gun, and he's desperate. And even if they find him, they will not take him easily. See if you can get an answer. I'll check around the back. said who you were, I mean, I could have had a heart attack the way you came in. For a guy with bad nerves, you're in the wrong business, Mitch. What do you do when you hear a siren pass out? Well, you could have been anybody, couldn't you? Who could he have been, Mitch? One of Paul Marshall's friends? Uh, who's Paul Marshall? Wise up, little fella, or I'll bite that nose off your face. 
She'll bust you for dealing dope, an accessory to a murder. You like the sound of that? Oh, come on. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I heard the news on the radio and I put two and two together, that's all. What'd you do for Marshall? He's serious. So am I. Well, I didn't do a lot. I mean, uh, van numbers, tour dates, uh, anything I picked up. Got a lump of dope out of it now and again, but I don't know what's going down with him. I mean, he's right out of my league. How'd you make contact with him when you needed him? I, I didn't. I, I, he found me. Look, I'm telling you the truth. Um, he wouldn't come here, so so I, I'd, I'd talk to him in the street or we'd go into a bar somewhere. Which bars? Name some. Oh, I don't know. Uh, some in the West End. We went to a few in the West End a couple of times. A place in Covent Garden, a sort of wine bar. He was well in with some waitress there. A girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. What'd she look like? Did she have a name? Um, yeah, Julie. Uh, yeah, I think it's Julie. I mean, she's sort of dark hair, real good looker. <laughs> Julie. He was right. She's a doll. I'm sure she'd be overwhelmed to hear you say so. Charlie 5 to control. Come in, Charlie 5. What's happening, Harry? We've got a tail on Marshall's girlfriend heading west. Tell Spikings we'll sit on it when we get to where she's going. Could be Marshall's bolt hole. Out. Gotcha. I'll give him the word. Get Spike into you, Harry's onto something. Sit here? Why don't we shake it down? You'd like that, wouldn't you? We do nothing without Spiking's word, remember? Particularly you, which means no shaking down of dolls, as I understand it. Okay, whatever you say, Sergeant. I mean, Commissioner. Dempsey, that's him. Close that bag. Let's get him. No! What do you want? A war in the street? We let him go in and we call Spikings. Charlie Five, come in control. Yeah, control's the damn word, all right. Speak, please. Let's have it, Harry. A black cab just delivered Marshall to the girl's place. He's gone in, sir, and he's on his own. You leave him that way. I want to know where that van is and what's in it. And he's no good to me with holes in him. Got that, Dempsey? Sit tight and wait for me. Yeah, I heard already. I got a walking rule book with me. Hi, right, Chaz, get on that thing, get some cars over there fast. Then get on to the governor and tell him I want marksmen too. But I don't want Marshall to get one single sniff of it, right? right not one uniform, not one sound. Tell him to wear tennis shoes if they have to. What are you looking for? Nothing. Nothing. Honest. Mm. Sweetheart. Mm -hmm. You haven't had anyone button on in you today, have you? I mean, about me. No. Of course not. Why should I have? It's all right. 
I just got a deal going funny on me, that's all. See, I set up a bit of business with a fellow called Masshead. And now him and his Arab mates are trying to screw me for it. It's, it's ridiculous, really. I didn't even want to get involved in the first place. Look, he's not here now, is he? And you're not going to spend the whole of the evening looking out of the window for him, I hope. I thought you came here to see me anyway. Yeah, of course I did. Of course I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Harry, backup's on its way. We're going to seal off the street and put two men on the opposite roof if we can. If he comes out shooting, we might need the insurance. You stay put until you get the word from me. Understood. Just checking the insurance, babe. If you want, I can whittle you a couple arrows while we're waiting. Why not? They make a good deal less noise than you do. Let's take the wine and go to bed, shall we? It's not far. Now, that is the best offer I've had all day. Let her go. Now get out of my way! <laughs> or she's dead! I mean it! You won't get out of this street unless you drop that gun. That's a promise. Shut your mouth! <laughs> now you take one more step in here and she's dead! Do you understand me? He ain't gonna tell us much now. So this was the first time you've seen him for a while, was it? And you've no idea where he'd been or what he was doing? No. He rang me at work and said he wanted to see me. It was how I always was. Did he say anything to you after he'd arrived? Did you know the police were looking for him? Not the police, no. He said somebody was looking for him, but not the police. I didn't know, honestly, I didn't know. A name, girl. We need a name. <laughs> easy, easy, Chief, come on. 
girl just had a loaded 38 stuck in her face. Did he say why they were looking for him, Julie? Who they were? <laughs> he said they were Arabs, I think. He said he didn't want to do it, whatever it was. He didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, I bet. But no names, nothing else. <laughs> he did say, um, somebody, uh, Masada, Masada. I think. Yes, that was it, Masad. You ever mentioned this Masad before? <laughs> Did Marshall have an address somewhere that you know about? A house or a flat? Or did he always come to you? He moved around. The only thing he paid rent on was a, a lock-up garage in Battersea. Know where it is, Julie? Yes. <laughs> Hassan and Khalil will be in the van here by the telephone box. At that signal, Yasser and myself will leave and take this route here so to arrive here. By that time, you, Khalil, should be approaching from this direction. It will be early and there will be little traffic, which is better for us. When we see you, we shall take our position here, and here is where we act. You follow this. Tomorrow, remember this. If necessary, Karim is worth all our lives. We succeed, or we die for him. Bingo. One hijacked van. We hit the jackpot, Harry. Well, what's left of it? Let's see if we can put some light on the subject. Looks like whatever came in went out in a hurry. So Marshall must have delivered the goods. To myself, presumably. Maybe not. Maybe Marshall ripped them off before he could get here. And that's why Massad's looking for him. True. You've got a criminal brain, Dempsey. Yeah, well, I went to a good school. This must be the one. Opened with a crowbar by the look of it. So much of a guarantee. I don't know, what's this? I have a feeling you might be somewhat familiar with this. Oh, yeah? It's cartridge paper. Gun oil. Thought you'd recognize it. Yeah, you make it sound like I use it as an aftershave. There's more in here, you know. You gotta be thinking what I'm thinking. Just for once. Friend Marshall was gun running. Yeah, not for the League of Decency either. This is terrorism, Harry. All right, Scott, you fit. Here's our man. Salim Massad, born Syria 1949, age 35. Suspected terrorist affiliation, Lebanon 1977. Organized student groups, Beirut 1978-80. Instrumental in Black September operations under the leadership of Yasuf Kerim. I doubt whether he knew it, but Marshall teamed himself up with a genuine revolutionary. Black September, what is that, an English weather report? It's a terrorist organization, financed by drug running. It's probably where Marshall came in. They must have had enough on him to get him into this one. Still doesn't explain what Massad's up to over here. Wait a minute. What was that second name on the printout? Kerim. Yasuf Kerim. Bells are ringing somewhere. 
Spaggings. Get me Roscoe at the yard, will you? Now, Karim, very soon. No, I'll handle it, Roscoe. You let your governor know what's going down, will you? We've had Karim locked up under our noses all this time. He shot an Arab diplomat outside his home two months ago. It's like bloody tribal warfare. Where is it? Brixton. They're moving into high security today. Spikings, SI-10, I want a word with your governor, fast. Massad's going to spring him. He's got the iron to do it, that's for sure. Come on. Oi, where are you going? Brixton. Massad's probably on the street with those guns right now. All right, but you keep your radio open. Any sign of trouble, you call for backup. Right, Dempsey? I hear you, boss. I hear you. Versed in ballistics, Dempsey. What do you think they're armed with? Something small and nasty. Machine pistols, I guess. Throw a lot of bullets real fast. Control to Charlie Five. Are you receiving me, Charlie Five? You'd better be unless you fancy being unemployed. You can't fire me. I'm an American citizen. Forget about the prison, Dempsey. Kerim's already on his way. There's a three-car convoy going east to Wandsworth. Get after it and back them up. I've got a nasty feeling they're going to need it. We're on our way. The sound's going to hit him. He's going to hit him now. Where the hell are we? Not far, but not near enough. Oh, well, sit tight. <laughs> Public school? What's the matter? I thought you were used to that side of the road. You read the convoy? Yes, sir. They're armed and they've been told what to expect. Good. Okay. That might help. Worth of Chicago.
Fire's on the roof. On the roof! You move, I'll kill you. Come on, spread him! Spread him! Give me that. This one's loaded. Who do you think you are anyway, huh? Red Cross Battalion, you're charging here, you're not even armed! Don't tell me you're complaining. You don't make peace, you're a lousy cop. And you're a worse driver. If there's any shortcoming in my ability to do my job, it's because I have to be shackled to you while I'm doing it. Shackled to me, huh? That's not a bad idea. Would that be day and night? Heaven forbid. Look at this. What in hell do you call this, Dempsey? Don't you know where you are yet? This is Wandsworth, not Chicago. Hey, you can't blame me for this. I wasn't driving. 